Taking the oath, a uniformed Minneapolis police chief testified against one of his own, as did several other police officers in the case against Derek Chauvin. So does this mean the so-called code of silence or blue wall is beginning to shatter? We might as well say a lynching in full public view. Um, it's hard for me to imagine a police officer um, justifying that behavior. Journalist Jamie Calvin says it's way too premature to celebrate the crumbling of the blue wall. Calvin fought for the release of the Laquan McDonald videos after an anonymous tip from within the Chicago Police Department. The code of silence isn't only officers not coming forward, it's officers falsifying reports or reinforcing the accounts uh, you know, of other officers. And Calvin says sticking with the narrative that may be false. Minneapolis police originally told a much different story. They described what happened um, between Chauvin and, and, and Floyd as a medical issue before they knew there was a 17 year old who had made a recording of what she saw. Attorney Tori Hamilton represents CPD officers who have blown the whistle against wrongdoing within the department. She and others believe without the George Floyd video, the Minneapolis chief and officers would not have testified against Chauvin. But many say the code of silence needle will not move until everyone from the superintendent down to supervisors will encourage and support officers speaking out. There's not been one glimmer of an indication from the Chicago Police Department or from the city of Chicago that it values or protects whistleblowers. Former CPD officer Shannon Spaulding learned the hard way for blowing the whistle on corruption within the department. When you do that, you put yourself and your family in great danger, retaliation, and it is a life sentence. Spalding says until whistleblowers are protected, not much will change because not every case will have video documenting the real story. Sarah Schulte, ABC7 Eyewitness News.